as we decided to dive into it because we never had, Shadowrun Crossfire. Right. Even though there is a campaign, we just did sort of a standalone, the quick start. Yeah, the like called. basic game included in the book, which we later learned is pretty hard and online. You can find an even more beginner scenario that we didn't do. Um, uh, so yeah, as you said, no experience points or anything like that, just going into it vanilla. And it definitely, it, it did not, uh, we all remarked, it doesn't feel like a traditional deck building game, really. It's, uh, no, because usually when you play deck building game, you're buying every turn or something. That wasn't really the case, I feel. It, it was, there's two big things in this. Number one, when you do buy a card, it's going directly into your hand. Mm -hmm. So I loved that because that really, it made it feel much more strategic and you're really planning about what to do in your next turns. Well, it made weaker cards stronger because you can be like, I need that just that one more power. Right, for sure. And uh, then the other thing is you you don't have cards dedicated to money of any kind. The resources for money are split among everyone based on completing obstacles, and there are separate tokens, so your deck is, I feel, much more streamlined. It's, you're, you're really only doing one thing. You don't have right. to worry about money but cluttering it. The other big issue what comes across is these obstacles get pretty big and hard pretty fast. Yeah. And instead of being able to just, oh, I'll just buy in enough so I can kill it, you really have to all work together to deal with these things. Cooperation is definitely important. Uh, we, we made a little mistake where we had too many of the basic cards still shuffled into the main black market deck. Mm -hmm. So I think that skewed it a, a little bit to make it harder right. for us. But we still made it to the, near the end. Yeah, we got pretty close. Uh, like, it, we got this one card came out that made us discard our hands for the final round where we both had our like our god hands yeah it was and so that, sad <laughs> it was a but, real shame like at first when we after we lost you know i was just like really this is did we lose but now that i know that you're supposed to like you actually get experience even if you lose because or what do they call you um, uh, i don't know what their word it's like for you, experience you hop is. out no like when you oh, you know yeah uh you leave the mission and you're supposed to sort of grind him grind it uh it I didn't feel as bad about the loss because it then felt more like a game. I just pushed as far as like we could, and I would say we did pretty well. Like I don't even feel the need, like I want to do the beginner one. Like I'm fine if we did the campaign and just kept losing and then getting stickers and stuff. No, yeah, I'm with you. Uh, the the that that campaign thing seems pretty cool, and having your own personalized race and class and deck for you and all that stuff is pretty now, cool. How do you feel now knowing that this system is going to be used for the Dungeons and Dragons one? I, th I think it's perfect. I'm, I'm actually super excited. Uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm really happy that, that they chose to do that. I think it could work with almost any RPG system. We have not played the Pathfinder adventure card game. I don't think you have. Uh, but I did play the Warhammer adventure game mm -hmm. once uh, when it came out at Gen Con, and I feel like, from what I've heard, those have a kind of a that has a similar feel. I think Pathfinder does as well, where you're all working together and attacking monsters to complete quests, and it's just it is a really nice adaptation of the RPG to a card game space. Uh, well, yeah. yeah, and because even though you lose an encounter, but you go back and gain experience, it does get more of that. Almost, it, from what we could tell online, those stickers really matter. Yeah. Which is nice because it makes it, it's not a deck building game that borrows from RPG. It feels more like you really need that RPG leveling up abilities and then you have some, your deck building is really just you being like, I attack with a sword or something. You know, it's not nearly as. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we, yeah, it was really fun, you know, like hashing out with each other. All right, what cards do you have? Can I, it, is it possible to complete this? Right, like, your it, turn? it really, because the way you actually fight enemies is not just six damage, done. Like a lot of the other deck building games we play. Uh, it was, you have to first, it needs a green symbol, then it needs a two of anything, then a red, then a red, then a blue. So we'd have to be like, okay, well, I'm going to hit it with the green first, then the two. Then you can do this, then you can... Yeah, you know. very puzzly, very satisfying when we, we were able to pull off those combos in turn with each other. No, it, uh, it actually reminded me almost like a... And the way the cooperative... Because some cards had abilities that did something special if you helped on... You could add to uh, an, uh, your friend's turns. Uh, the cooperative from the uh, Encounters deck building game right. of Legendary. and But I think it's almost better because of that. And it became really scary because I got something called the Godwire. <laughs> which was this enemy that healed two levels every time it attacked me. So we had to be like, okay, we need to like nuke this thing. We can't slowly chip at it. Yeah, it was really fun figuring and it what, out. Yeah, and when we did, we're like, we have a way. We all of a sudden just did this awesome like <laughs> The turn. stars aligned. Yeah, it was really, 
it made you feel, uh, I felt much more accomplished. You know what actually I think would be an amazing property for this? Mm. Dark Souls. Mm. I think it could easily fit that sort of, I, I mean, I felt like we were on the ropes almost. After the first round, we were on the ropes of our line, really required us to. Yeah, and I really like, I did feel that the, that difficulty escalation scale felt very balanced uh, based on there's this like crossfire level system with your uh, disc dark card pile from events that come out. It felt like a very natural progression from, okay, we're pretty good. Okay, it's a little harder. Oh my God, well, it's really hard. And also, <laughs> what's also nice about it is it makes it so you can't just be like, all right, let's just keep defending and turtle. Yeah, you, you exactly. gotta You gotta move. For sure, yeah, you can't just grind it out until you have the perfect hand or something like that. Uh, so if you haven't tried Shadowrun Crossfire already, check it out. Also, we are not as familiar with the Shadowrun universe, so it was really cool seeing some of these monsters and stuff for the first time. Right, I'm definitely, we're definitely curious if you know, like, the Godwire, if there's some <laughs> lore behind it, you know. <laughs> yeah, give us that talk. If you enjoyed this video, it was just a snippet of our full-length podcast, which you can find on our YouTube channel every week, so please go ahead, like, and subscribe for more board game-related content coming at you in the future. And don't forget to check out RollForCrate.com, where we actually sell a lot of the games we talked about, as well as post news and all our other videos. Until then, I'm Will Keeler. I'm Jonathan Estes, and this is Roll for Crit.